Matt fans, welcome back. Data manipulation can be tricky. You might have heard it referred to as data wrangling. But never forget, it needn't be hell with SQL. The default data type in QGIS is now the Geo package. This makes sense because Geo packages have a number of advantages over other formats like the shapefile. To name a few of these advantages, a Geo package is just one file. So no more missing projection files. There's no meaningful character limit on field names. There's no meaningful limit on the number of fields you can have. I mean, it's around 32,000, but you shouldn't have that many columns in a database table anyway. So how does a Geo package do all of this? Well, a Geo package is a database, and that means we can do all kinds of cool stuff with it, like use SQL. In this Geo package, I've got a few different layers. Some are points, some are lines, some are polygons. First one we'll look at is this FHRS, which is the Food Hygiene Rating Scheme for restaurants in Leeds in the UK. And let's take a look at all the fields that we've got in here. Wow, there's so many. Do we need all of those? Depends what analysis we're doing. Now with the Geo package, we can right click on the layer in our browser panel and we can go to Execute SQL. Now SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And here we've got a basic structure that QGIS has put in for us. It says select, and this asterisk means everything, from our FHRS layer, and we're gonna limit the results to 10. So we're only gonna pull back 10 results. Let's execute this and see what happens. You can see I've got this table with absolutely everything in it, but we've only got the first 10 records. When we've executed SQL, we can load our results as a new layer. So if I click down here, we can give the layer a name. Instead of query layer, I'll call it FHRS first 10. And then if I load that layer in, you can see it appears in our project. If we turn off the original layer, you can see the first 10 records in that attribute table. Now, if you do bring a layer in as a query layer, it will always have this little filter next to it. And if you hang over it, it will tell you what your SQL query looks like. If you click on it, you can change your SQL query. Currently, we've got a limit of 10. That limits us to the first 10 records. If we get rid of that limit of 10 and OK it, all of the records are returned. Let's take a look at the attribute table for this layer. We'll open it up. Ah, oh, we've still got all these columns. Do I really need all of these? Again, it depends what you're doing, but you might want to get rid of them. If you do want to change your query at all, you can, as I said, click on the filter and then we can select something else. Now for our analysis, we might only want the business name. Note that it comes up and gives us a little helping hand with what attributes we're looking at. And I want the business type as well. And then let's go for the overall rating value. These are the only three columns that I would like to see. So I've changed my query and then I'll hit OK. Huh, where did all my restaurants go? Now nothing appears to have a rating and Leeds is going to go hungry. One thing that I did forget to put in here is the geometry. We need to know where these places are. And when you're dealing with vectors in a geo package, you'll have a column that holds the geometry. Often this is called geom, but you may need to check what the name of your column is. So if I add this column in, geom, and OK that, aha, our restaurants are back, excellent. And if I right click again and go to open attribute table, now we only have the three columns that I'm interested in for whatever reason. What if we only want really hygienic restaurants? Well, we can go to our filter again and we can add another clause, the where clause, where rating value. And again, this pops up to help us out is equal to, and then we're going to go for five. Okay. Maybe you want to know which restaurants to avoid. We can do that too. So if we go in here and change this to less than or equal to, three. So we'll only show the restaurants with a rating value that is less than or equal to three. We OK that. And you can see how that changes the data in the background. So there we have some basic SQL select statements. Now I'm just going to tidy up my layers panel and get rid of this query layer. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff we can do with SQL. Now in our geo package, I've got some other layers. Here I've got two layers for schools, one for primary, one for secondary. You can see that these are in my project already. Here's the secondary schools, their locations around Leeds. Now, if I right click on the geo package and go to execute SQL, 
I don't get any of the starter statement, so I would need to write my own SQL in order to have a look at anything here. So I'll go select everything from, and I'm interested in the secondary schools here. So I'll go for school 2022 secondary, and we'll just execute that code. I've got 44 rows here, which means I've got 44 schools, and you can see we've got the geom column as well. All these attributes exist in our attribute table and the school code itself is a unique code, one for each school. Now because we're dealing with spatial data and we're in a geo package, we can use something called spatial SQL. One of the commands for this is st buffer and the st stands for spatial type and I would like to put a buffer around each point from my school. So I'm going to go from schools secondary and the column I would like the buffer to operate on is the geometry column. The distance I would like the buffer to be is going to be 400 meters. The units in this case are taken from the CRS, the coordinate reference system, in this case it's uh, EPSG 27700 and so that base unit is in meters. So this will create a buffer around our schools of 400 meters. Let's execute that. Now, currently it doesn't look like much. We can't see anything and the column name is really awful. So we can change that column name, go up to the top and we would like to select that. And if I put in as, it's going to give that column a name. So we'd like this selection to take place, this buffer to take place as geom. So if I execute that, you can see the column is now called geom. You might have noticed that currently we can't load this as a new layer. We need some attributes in our attribute table. So I'm going to add an attribute here and we'll go for that unique code. So it's from the school 2022 secondary table and the code we would like is school code. So that's a unique code for each school. And if I execute that, we now have a column and our geometry is in there and we can load this as a new layer. So I'll just call this school buffer 400 and load that layer into our project. There it is in our project, and I'll just put that below the schools. If I wanted to change the distance of that buffer, I can just go in here and change it to 1000 meters. Okay, that, and it changes accordingly. Fantastic. Now let's take a look at a more advanced query. What I'd like to do here is select all the restaurants that fall within 400 meters of a secondary school. So I'm going to go back to my geo package and I am going to execute SQL. Now to execute our SQL or structured query language, we need to start with our select statement. And I'm going to be selecting from our FHRS leads table. What columns would I like from that? Well, I'm going to go for everything. So I'll just put a dot and an asterisk. And then we're also going to be selecting from our secondary schools. And from those, I would just like to have the school code. That will do nicely. Now, what tables are we selecting from? Well, we are selecting from our FHRS. And we're also selecting from our secondary school table as well. Finally, I need to put in my WHERE clause, and for this I'm going to use the function stDistance. This allows us to select geometries that fall within a specific distance of another geometry. Geometries in this case are going to be the FHRS leads dot geom, so the geometry from that table, and also the geometry from our secondary schools. And we also need to specify what that distance should be and I would like it to be less than or equal to 400 meters. And if I execute this, there we have all the restaurants returned within 400 meters of a school and at the end we'll have our school code added on there as well. Now we can load this as a new layer, I'm just going to go as a query layer and let's load that in and close. And there are all the restaurants within 400 meters of a school in the Leeds area. Now, can you think of any problems that might occur using that SQL query? Do you have any SQL queries that you'd like to use in your own work? How could we extend this? What other layers might we add? What more analysis could we do? Have a think, leave some ideas in the comments below. And for now, I'll wrap this up. Happy mapping.